un cucho. Ang nagjumrah pakah mentok ke jumrah kan itu bithi sama ka. Ai nang nang peton itu bithi tetit eh nang bai dos rai nang panyha da ដោយសាក្សីដោយមិត្តវីមិត្តកណវៈមិត្តវីអន្តរជាតិការពីក្តីលោកអឺ Thank you, President. The um, trial chamber has deliberated briefly on the issue that you raised, Mr. Carnivas, and on behalf of the chamber, uh, I wish to acknowledge first that it is understandable that uh, those coming from different legal systems have some discomfort with uh, a different legal process. However, it is the procedure upon which this court functions, uh, and it is the procedure that was agreed as long ago as uh, in the agreement between the Royal Government uh, and the United Nations. Therefore, uh, the general rule is uh, that there is a legal presumption of the integrity of the uh, investigation, that any uh, concerns uh, about the methods or the subject matter uh, traversed during the investigation must be raised during the investigation. Uh, and now at trial, as Judge uh, Levenia has expressed, the investigation is treated as the starting point and can be rebutted only in exceptional instances. Any such rebuttal must relate not to technical issues, uh, but to substance. Uh, and uh, in raising uh, an exception, you must satisfy the trial chamber that you have well-grounded concerns about the reliability of any part of the investigation. To use a well-known common law term, you cannot embark on a fishing expedition. It seems to the trial chamber that most concerns uh, about what a witness might have said during an investigation and what he or she is saying now in evidence can be dealt with quite simply by asking the witness. Uh, and for that reason, uh, for these reasons, the trial chamber is yet to be convinced that the playing of a tape or a portion of a tape will assist in any way. Uh, you, you need to satisfy the trial chamber that there is a well-grounded reason for going back inside the investigation and investigating it. Therefore, we would prefer and so rule that you simply ask the questions that you have of the witness. Now, um, I'll just pause here to make sure that there's nothing the President wishes to add to what I have said. Uh, thank you. Um, and I understand the ruling, and I appreciate the ruling. And uh, in the future, where we do endeavor to do this, we will see whether we have exceptional circumstances and raise them uh, because <coughs> now we understand uh, the court's position. Uh, and I should note, I'm told by the uh, by my colleague uh, that I, when I did mention that one of the national investigators was related to a prosecutor, uh, that wasn't properly relate, uh, translated. You know, he's actually 
a younger brother of one of the national prosecutors. And this is the same investigator involved in the matter in which we filed an application E2224 dealing with another witness. Um, now, getting to... Thank you. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Carnivas. I just need to clarify that point as well. Uh, any suggestions of impropriety are themselves improper, uh, and uh, a suggestion that someone is related and draws is asking the trial chamber to draw an inference of um, impropriety. Therefore, it is not acceptable in, in court. So I do apologize for interrupting uh, because I know what it's like to be on a, on a, on a train of thought. So uh, please proceed now. Thank you. And, and um, I apologize. I'm learning as I'm going along. I'm trying my level best. We do try to be professional, and sometimes we don't get it right, but we do endeavor. And we appreciate the court's uh, understanding and indulgence. Uh, sir, uh, let me ask you a simple question. Uh, the day before you were interviewed on tape, did you have a meeting with the investigators? And if so, can you please tell us where it was located? បាទមួយថ្ងៃមុននឹងគេសំភាសគេបានជួបខ្ញុំនៅជាមុនដែរគឺគេបានជួបនៅពេលខ្ញុំកំពុងបង្រៀនសាស់នៅសាលាប្រ
mong đọc ở cái trình lên đòn tại mà mong vẫn đang tới bà bạn bạn trình thực tế mà Right, thank you. Let's move on a little bit uh, to when you actually was read your statement, the summary of it, and then you signed it. And the reason I'm asking is because in testifying here over the last three or four days, you've indicated that at times you were speculating when you were providing answers. Is that right? តើអញ្ចឹងឬក៏យ៉ាងណាបាទមានពាក្យជាច្រើនដែលខ្ញុំឆ្លើយនៅពេលនោះមានពាក្យប្រហែលមានពាក្យស្មានហើយក៏មាន
uh, and you answer is, yes, that is possible. Now, using this as an example, when you are answering these sorts of questions, are you speculating as well? Your Honours, I would object to the characterisation that my learned friend just put on the witness's description of his responses. Um, there's a subtle but important difference. Um, if we return to the witness's last response, where he used the word analysis, he said analysis which is based on my understanding or an explanation based on my understanding. Now, there is a, a significant difference between one speculating without any knowledge of the fact and one who had more than eight years' experience based on this witness's testimony in the procedures of communicating and in, and in the systems that were employed. Uh, we would submit respectfully that when the witness gives, to use his words, an analysis based on his extensive experience and knowledge, that is not speculation. And that is why I object, because my learned friend is, is characterizing that analysis as speculation. Uh, and I would invite your honors to uh, give a direction to, to counsel and to the witness as to this very important uh, difference, which, which um, I think may have been lost, uh, possibly in translation and, and possibly in the way that counsel are characterizing the evidence. If I may briefly respond. It's rather rich uh, for this prosecutor to stand up and then pre uh, uh, go ahead and give a closing argument while also telegraphing to the witness what he should be saying when he was accusing the defense of doing the very same thing. You have his answers. Obviously, we are getting started. I asked him. Uh, a question, he gave us an answer. I then went to a concrete example where it wasn't based on analysis, but we was asked to speculate. So we leave it to you, Your Honours, to decide. And of course, the prosecution will have ample time to clarify in their closing brief what the gentleman meant when he says he is based on his analysis. But my question went to what was being asked of him by Judge Laverne, which had nothing to do with analysis. So in addition, and perhaps my learned friend was being polite, or I beat him to the gun and beat him to the uh, opportunity to stand up, that uh, objection was belated.
ដោយគេកាយជូនទៅលោកត្រីចក្រមជាបលខាត់ហើយដើម្បីសម្រេចលើបញ្ហាThank you, President. The uh, trial chamber <coughs> allows the objection from the prosecutor uh, and uh, uh, notes that uh, the question put to the witness was based on uh, a, a presumption that Judge Levin had asked uh, questions which invited a speculative answer. Uh, that is not correct. Uh, and it's necessary to specify that the word speculation in English means guess. In other words, no factual basis for uh, making a statement. The witness's uh, testimony has been translated as analysis, which uh, is uh, uh, an inf uh, a statement made by the witness which is based on facts that he knows. Um, consequently, use of the word speculation uh, is uh, not acceptable in relation to what this witness has called analysis. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Carnivas, if you could possibly avoid the use of the word speculate uh, and, uh, and use the more neutral terms when you are challenging this witness. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Judge Cartwright. Well, we'll... Uh, We'll get back to this issue momentarily. But let me move on. And we'll get back to the issue of your analysis at times. Now, you told us that after uh, listening to the summary, uh, you went ahead and signed it, uh, knowing that you were signing it as a statement under oath. And then you were asked a question here in court concerning a reference that you made to my client, Mr. Inksery, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and I'm referring specifically to page 13 of document E3-64, the Khmer ERN number is 0032-8035-2-0. French 00417030304. In English, it's 00334054. And if you look at it, you will see that you were asked the question. You said that Mr. Ng Sri had his own working place. Were there any telegram translators at his place? Answer, Ng Sri had his foreign affairs ministry, so he had his personal telegram translators. Let's stop there for a second. When you say, so he had his personal telegram translator, was that you saying that, or was that something that was put there by the investigators based on their understanding as to what you had told them? บาดสารนี่คือจะจําไล่นี่คือจะจําไล่ 
So when you say, so he had his personal telegram translators, when you said that, you were not speculating. That was a fact that you knew back then. បាទពេលនឹងវាកន្លងហូមហើយយូរមកហើយខ្ញុំមិនសូវប្រកត <coughs> ហើយគាត់ចង់ទាក់ទងទៅខាងក្រៅប្រទេសវិច្ឆាស់ជាមានទាំងអ្នកទូលេខមានទាំង <coughs> <coughs> ខាងផ្នែកទាក់ទងទៅខាងក្រៅប្រទេសហ្នឹងរឿងទូលេខហ្នឹងគឺគាត់មានឆ្លងមកខាងក្រុមខ្ញុំមែនដូចជាសាទ
Now, let's look at your testimony concerning this when you were asked questions by the prosecution. And I'm referring to testimony from the Third of September, 2012, it's page 14 in English, the transcript. Khmer, it's 0084481, French, it's also page 14. You're asked the question, in fact, they read you this section. And it was verbatim. It was read to you. And then you were asked, what else can you tell us about this telegram translation unit? Did you know where it was based and how many people worked there? Now let's look at your answer that you gave us only a couple of days ago. With regard to the telegram's communications and Mr. Ng Sri, I'm afraid I do not recall or whether there was any such telegram decoding unit at this office. Question. So, we could correct your prior statement then, that you didn't know whether there was a telegram translating unit at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Would that be correct? Answer. I am not sure on this. That's why I'm not testifying on something that I am not clear. Do you see the questions that were posed to you? And do you see the answers you gave us a couple of days ago? And when you gave those, uh, those uh, answers, were you being honest and truthful? Thank you. Now, later on, you are asked a question, and this is uh, on the September 4th, the next day, the following day. This would be on page 37 in English. Khmer is 0084-4. Four eight zero French. It's forty one, a uh, forty to forty one. You were then asked a question by the civil party lawyer, and it starts with, "My next question is related to your testimony." From your testimony from the 29th August up to this morning, your response mainly dealt with the communications via telegram domestically. What about telegram correspondence between Cambodia and other countries? How was it done? Did any of the telegrams from the overseas sent to 870 committee? Answer. In relation to overseas telegram, I could not grasp them fully. So I am in no position to enlighten you. Thank you. What about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Did it ever send any telegrams to 870 committee through your unit or did they send it directly to 870 committee? And then you state, Ministry of Foreign Affairs was located in Phnom Penh. There was no telegram communication with my team. If not, how did they communicate? That is, the communication between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and 870 committee, and then you say, I don't know. Now, do you stand by those answers that you gave, that you are not in a position to grasp the subject matter fully? 
as far as overseas telegrams. Now, did you ever go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? บาดខ្ញុំដូចខ្ញុំជម្រាបមិញគឺថាខ្ញុំទៅពន្យល់ដែលនាំពីរឿងការប្រើប្រាស់ឯកសារសម្ងត់ម្ដងនៅអតីត
where you indicate that you only knew technical matters. Would that be correct, that the extent of your knowledge was only to technical matters about the deep and important information that you did not know. And this would have been during your first interview, right around the time that it was about to end, approximately 11-15-18 February 2009, we have the tape we can play. Do you recall telling this to the investigators? that your knowledge was limited to technical matters. បាទចំណេះដឹងរបស់ខ្ញុំគឺខ្ញុំនិយាយអញ្ចឹងមែនខាងប្រជាជាតិ <coughs> Hang the yoke by hang a young moon mean gymnast dung a cool day back. All right. Well, let me just get a little ahead of myself. So, if you didn't have knowledge about political matters, when you are analyzing documents and you're giving your opinion as to what the document that is shown to you, how it should be interpreted. How are you doing that unless you are I would say well, I can't use the word speculate but how, could, how would you do it if you don't have any actual knowledge or training or background I think the question is too vague and, and, and frankly unfair to the witness. Um, he was asked to analyze and describe numerous aspects of various telegrams. Um, if there's a specific telegram and a specific analysis which my friend wishes to impeach, that specific instance should be put to the witness. Um, that's all I would say. There was, there was extensive uh, description given of telegrams. We would say, um, well, I'll stop there in order not to be accused of broadcasting to the witness. I think my friend should refer to specific examples. As I noted that we would be getting to that, I'll move on. And uh, now that we both agree that concrete examples should be shown, I'll do that after the lunch break. Now, in your testimony, uh, it would appear that I don't want to go into the, uh, all of the mechanics, but at some point, after you translate a telegram, you decode it, you give it to a messenger. Is that correct? Now, once you give it to that messenger, do you, do you, or did you ever follow the messenger and follow the message itself to see where it actually went? Right, and I'm going to go step by step. So the messenger would take the message, go to the post, and drop off the message or give it to someone. That's your understanding back then of what happened. But, 
ยอตปกจุงกี้ให้คางเนเยียมนั่นกี้ยอลังตะเพียมบ้า Well, we're going to go step by step. Now, did the messenger ever go into the K1 compound, to your understanding or to your your knowledge? Were you authorized to enter the premise? And if so, how often did you enter the K1 premises? All right. Did you ever enter the K1 premises with a message that you had decoded in order for you to personally deliver it to the targeted person or persons? Bạn về miền Trang Đại, bà phê là khi ông bỏ xa rồi hỏi, hỏi cặp chuông thì phê là kê có hào khi ông tôi phải chúng, khi ông có phụm bạch bà này là xa tê, khi ông cho tôi chuông thằng con to lầm đoàn, to đại đại. Okay, so you would hand it to Pon, but you would not hand it to the targeted people that supposedly the messages were headed for. The extent would be you would hand it to Pon. But we prove Pon is made of a human. Human has to learn how to say it in the day. All right. Now, can you please describe the premises of K1? How many buildings were there? Bát nông mần tì cò mùi nếu Ca sầm mây nếu Cứ miên tay à kia khu khu and what about where Pon worked? Was there not also another small building or small place where he worked? Or did he work in one of those two buildings? Bạn còn nâng thử cả nâu chân tí bí Hồi phần này khang chung kê bằng ơ Bởi tập bí thư viên chô lâu tấu Cứ nâng ai chân tí bí nâng hơi để còn thử cả Of which building? There were two buildings you told us Which of the two buildings? Bạn cứ ở kia mũi đài Chô bị phá lâu chô tớ Cứ ở kia mũi đài Bạn đòi thằng ai bà Ở kia bạn đòi thằng ai mũi That's your answer? Okay. Now, you, t you tend to indicate when the messages were provided to the messengers, they would simply drop them off 
or if they were coming from K1, they would pick them up at the gate and then deliver them to you. Is that right? អត់អញ្ចឹងទេពេលខ្លះសាខ្លៃខ្លៃគេហៅតាមទូរស័ព្ទបើសាវែងវែងក៏គេឲ្យអ្នករួមយាមទៅឲ្យកន្លែងខ
พวกกอดเหมือนบานในยี่เอาไว้แต่กอดบานจูบหรือมวยก็กาสังมัดเอาไว้แต่จะกาเกิดกาสังมัดตีขนมในกอมวยกอดเหมือนไล่ไปทีในยี่ปรับยมตีบาน And one final question before we, we uh, perhaps break for lunch. Uh, this is the same uh, individual that you had worked with uh, prior to 75 when you were at B20. Is that right? But ตั้งปีจงชนามจะสบายมอมไล่ให้กับแม่นกบอมอภัยได้คือตอนแต่ใบนี้ปีปอนนั่นคือชนามจงชนามจะสบูนให้บานขยมเรือกับไล่ปีขนมปรีมากีนั่นมันนกบอมอภัยนู้ดูชนะกับลองเด็กชมทุกกาจะมวยปอนนั่นคือจงจัดสบายโดยจงจัดสบูนคือบานรู้เลยจมูกขณีมาชนะมันได้ตุ่มรอมใบขณีเติร์ทุกาเรียงเรียงคลุนก็เติร์ทพนมขังเล็กพนมปิงเติร์ทไอ้ขยมกินเรือกระไลมอกระไลปรีเจมวยเนื้อบ่อมาพายนั่งว่า Right, and thank you. I stand corrected. And it was at B20, I believe, when you were working. That's when uh, there were three. The the task was divided into three different sections. One actually that would uh, decode. They were in different locations, different individuals working on decoding, broadcasting. Is that correct? บาดจังแมนคือเวียนติดตังโดยไล่โดยไล่ปีคณีมันได้สกอลมุกคณีเต้บาดคือเวียนไล่ตูเล็กย่อมไล่ไวเหมือนจูนซาตูเล็กเตะโตตูเล็กก็เนื้อเสียงคณีให้เวียนอังกฤษบุตรได้เป็นเหล็กย่อมเมียนดำนังปีสมรภูมิเอ้ก็ขยมมันจูนไอ้กี่ริบจอมซ้ายก็กินเอาโดยไล่เจ้าคือขยมบ้านจมเรียกเจ้าบ้านให้เนื้อจมไล่บอกขยมนั่นคือท่ามันได้คืนมุกนี้ติดตั้งไว้ตัดปีนี้มันสกอลนี้ตีบ้าน And was that because of the important principle of secrecy? Mr. President, uh, I see that it were five minutes after 12. This may be a good time to uh, break for, uh, for lunch. ขอบคุณขอบคุณสัตย์ไซไปเลยนี่เราเปิดมระนำไปพิสัยให้ทรองให้อันนี้ประกาศสำหรับนำไปพิสัยให้ทรองจะเป็นปีนี้ตัวเ
a number of requests for investigative action made by the defense, made by the Nunchia defense in this case. And those requests concern the recalling of witnesses to cover, to canvas the, the kinds of issues we've been debating this morning. Those requests were all rejected for various reasons, and we appealed them all. And in dismissing our appeal, I'd just like to, to tell the chamber what the pretrial chamber said. This statement by the co-investigating judges, and that referring to the ruling made by the co-investigating judges, means that if they properly exercise their discretion to refuse a request for investigative action, such as to interview or re-interview a witness, the trial stage the trial stage affords the defense, quote, every opportunity to contest the evidence. And let me repeat that, every opportunity to contest the evidence, including the possibility to, internal quote again, request the trial chamber to summon any of the witnesses the co-investigating judges have decided not to interview, crucially here, or re-interview the basis of those requests that we made. And finally, the point made by the co-investigating judges with which the pretrial chamber agrees is that the trial stage the trial stage is an additional and alternative, alternate, excuse me, form, forum rather, for the defense to contest the reliability of evidence. Now, this is a decision of the pretrial chamber based on a decision of the OCIJ, both organs operating in that system that Judge Cartwright described as the civil law system, the system that's applicable here. So that is the basis on which we proceeded at trial to believe reasonably I think, that we're able to explore these issues with the witnesses on the stand. And perhaps one final point on this, perhaps this will answer partially at least Judge Laverne's question about what the defense was doing during the investigation. Uh, in our case, we were filing uh, 25 requests for investigative action, and that took quite a lot of time. Uh, and that's not to mention all the additional requests filed by the other defense teams. So I know this, this issue is a bit of a bet noir with the chamber, but uh, I just think I need to make it clear it's a very important one for us, and I wanted to get that, that pretrial chamber quote on the record. My next point very quickly goes to the definition of the word speculate. As I understand the English definition of that word, it encompasses a situation where a conclusion is based on little or insufficient evidence, not, as Judge Cartwright suggested, that it only encompasses a situation based on no evidence. That's my understanding of that word in the English language, and of course it can be qualified with all sorts of adjectives, bald speculation, reasonable speculation, what have you, but the word itself does not mean what Judge Cartwright said it means exclusively, and that's our position for the record. And finally, before I forget, I've just been informed that our client is suffering from a backache, a headache, and a general lack of concentration, and for those three reasons, he would like to spend the afternoon in the holding cell. And that is our application for the morning. Thank you. ອົງຈຳແລະບັນຕາບຕຳນາສົ່ງຂອງຊົມຈົບຈອດນົນຊີໄດ້ບັນທຸລາງຕາມລະຍະມິຕິບີການປະດິດປະກອບຊົມຕ